It's who 
you're a good, good father. Well, hello and welcome to Living Courageously. And thanks so much for joining with us on Father's Day. You know, it's our prayer this week that you will know and understand how much God loves you, cares for you, and how much he hears you. You see, Jesus said that if we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? You see, in God, we find a good Father. And one of the ways God has been good to us here at the church is by connecting us with leaders in their field. And this week we had a chance to talk with one of those leaders. Let's take a look at what psychologist John Trent had to say. Joining me now is award winning author, psychologist, founder of Strong Families, and bagpipe player extraordinaire, John Trent. It's good to see you, my friend. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be with you as well. Thank you. John, as we continue to make our way through the pandemic, what are some suggestions you have for folks uh, in order for them to maintain their health mentally? Yeah. Boy, isn't that interesting? Because so much of the focus has been on physically. You know, you know, wear your mask, you know, worry about germs. And the thing that has tripped so many people up is, is not just the physical, but it's the emotional and spiritual and just the, just the way we're wired, you know, we have more than one component, you know, and, um, and for a lot of us, we've had to cut off contact with so many significant people. And, you know, you think, oh, that's not that big of a deal. It's a huge thing. So I think, you know, first of all, you know, just um, if you're feeling stressed at this time, then that's normal. And that's so important to just realize, man, there's a lot of us that, are, that have felt anxious, that have been felt depressed even. You know, it's, you know, we're not made for this. We're not made to just be shut down and shut down and shut down. Um, and then, Ken, of course, you know, it's like... Uh, in Proverbs, it says, you know, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And we get our hopes up. Oh, it's going to open up. And then it gets extended. <laughs> you know, stay in place or if you are feeling anxious or tense or, you know, struggling, it's okay because a lot of us are. Well, that's what I read, John, is that anxiety and depression right now, just off the charts, yeah. uh, for people who are struggling with it, What's one important thing they can do? Well, you know, you just mentioned kind of, you know, like one important thing, you know, and I think that's, that can be really, really crucial is, you know, we talk about this thing, you, have, you and I have talked about it called, you know, the two degree difference, how small things can make a big difference, you know, and I think for, for some of us, you know, we think, well, man, I'm really, I've got this big problem. I need a big solution. Well, no, actually, I think in a lot of ways, it is the small things. I mean, it's the faith, the grain of a mustard seed. It is just doing, it is doing little things. John, you wrote a book called The Two Degree Difference, and it's an excellent book. I, I highly recommend it. To, it gives you really practical steps to take on how you can improve your life one step at a time. Uh, John, how about that principle? How would it work, say, for example, between a husband or a wife or between a parent and a child? Well, yeah. What would a two-degree difference look like there? Well, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting, but um, for a lot of us, I think what this pandemic has done is, you know, put us in proximity with somebody for a long period of time. And anytime you do that, there's going to be some frustrations and tension. I mean, there's just no way, no way around it. But there also can be some opportunities too. Okay. Um, so let me give you a quick example. So it's real interesting. The word for forgiveness, guess what it literally means? It means to untie the knot, you know, to untie the knot, you know. So one of the things I'll do is I'll give people like a little a uh, three inch piece of rope, you know, so not to hit somebody if they're upset or anything like that, but just picture you've got a little three inch piece of rope and you tie it in a knot, you know, and so you just sit down with, with somebody you've been sheltering in 
place with all this kind of say, hey, we're getting, we're pretty soon we are going to be out of this. Okay, most of us, you know, we are getting out of it, you know. But hey, is there anything that I've done or what's one thing, one way I can maybe untie that knot? Okay, if there's been anything, is there anything knotted up? I mean, have some conversations with people. You know, it's interesting. We tend to avoid problems, and then we just don't talk about things. And, and, and boy, if we just took some time to, for example, a small thing could just be, hey, what's one thing? If I've done anything during this last month and we've been locked together that's frustrated you, well, let me untie the knot. John, thanks so much for your time. Um, it's great to see you, my friend. Uh, stay you. safe, stay strong, keep up the great work. And next time you're at the church, you got to bring those bagpipes with you. I'll do it. That would be awesome. All right, buddy. God bless. Thank you. We were blessed with 45,000 masks. It's just a blessing that Cathedral was honored to get receive all these masks and then go outside of their realm and just deliver them. We had the opportunity, I had so many volunteers uh, from my chaplain ministry, from my men's ministry that stepped up and was willing to help and deliver these uh, masks to all the nursing homes in the community. And then else we could say it's just a blessing. Even though we can't go in and pray and minister to them or bring the word of God to them and just fellowship with a lot of their uh, residents, we still are thinking about them, we still care about them, and we're showing them by giving them these masks. They were a blessing to us, so how can we not be a blessing to them? Are you running out of patience? Well, you should start walking instead. Whether you're physically running to stay in shape or mentally running to stay sane, slowing things down can make all the difference in your world. When you slow your body down and you calm your mind down, rest and recovery happens. Then your spirit can be restored, refreshed, and renewed to take on any challenge. In fact, adding one walk around the block to your daily routine can settle your mind, stimulate your metabolism, and help you stay patient through the process of overcoming. In Luke 24, 13 to 33, two men are on their daily walk to help deal with the stress and the chaos after the crucifixion of Christ. Then Jesus shows up and asks questions to help them see and share scriptures to get them to understand. And when they finally realize it's Jesus, instantly he disappears. Now that's what I call the power of slowing down. So take a walk. You just might run into Jesus. This is Cathedral Strong on the Minute.
Thanks so much, Michelle, and happy Father's Day to all of our hero dads out there. We celebrate you and are grateful for the gift that you are to us. Special shout out to my dad for the amazing godly influence in my life. This weekend, we want to bless all of our dads, our stepdads and our dads who stepped up, our papas and uncles and mentors who are all like fathers to us, those who were earthly fathers as well as those who are spiritual fathers. Special shout out to Pastor Ken. Thanks for all the ways you love us and lead us. Our Heavenly Father expresses His love in this amazing verse found in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. That's an important understanding about love. Loving leads to giving. And as we love generously, it leads to giving generously. In this moment, we bring our gifts to the Lord. I want to encourage you, you can text your gifts to the number at the bottom of the screen as we demonstrate our love to our Heavenly Father for his love for us. You can also go to our app, You can go to our website. You can drop by the church office or mail your gifts as we respond to God's incredible love in this moment. Let me speak God's blessing over you. Lord, thank you for your generous love to us. You're a good, good father. And we celebrate your love and life and generosity. And we ask that now as your people respond in generosity, you would bless them with abundance as well. I speak blessing over our dads that you would give them wisdom to know what to do and how to do it as they lead in this season. I pray that you who started a good work will be faithful to complete it in them and through them. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, on behalf of Pastor Ken and Kurt and all of our pastors and staff here at Cathedral, we sure do love and miss you and are looking forward to being back together with you very soon. Stay tuned. Information's coming out. We're in training. We're preparing the facility. We're preparing our team. Looking forward to being with you very soon. One of our ministries that is up and running already is my school. It ministers to those between age two and pre-K. And if you or someone you know is looking for some place to let your little one be loved and cared for, we encourage you to call the church office and be part of what we're doing in ministry through my school. Well, I'm praying that God would bless and encourage and strengthen you as Pastor Vaughn comes to minister. Have you been walking the same old road for miles and miles? You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain tamer. If you feel lost, We've 
feel it. Somebody testify it. Yeah. I was crushed when the Raiders announced they were moving, but I have to say, as this new stadium is almost finished, I mean, it really is amazing. It seats 65,000 people. There are 2,200 doors. There are 21,000 light fixtures. Can you imagine changing all those bulbs? The field that slides on and off, it weighs as much as the Eiffel Tower. If you took all the concrete that was used in the building and you build a sidewalk, it would stretch all the way from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. You could get your steps in on that trail. And then there were well, 64,000 dump trucks worth of dirt that removed that mountain of dirt from the site. That is a mountain of dirt. You know, how do you move that kind of dirt, that kind of mountain? It all started with the owner placing one shovel into the ground. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Zerubbabel and he had a dream to build well, a brand new beautiful structure, a temple. Now the temple was the center of worship. It was the place where God dwelt. He has this big dream. It's a massive dream. There was lots of opposition. And you could wonder, how is he gonna, well, how's he gonna get this accomplished? And in that moment, God comes to him and he gives him this word. He says, nothing, not even a mighty mountain will stand in his way. It will become a level plain before him. Do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Don't despise small beginnings. You know, sometimes the, the biggest step is not from zero to 10, it's from zero to one. If you give God something to work with, even something as small as a thought. Romans chapter 12 says this about our thoughts. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. How do you become a new person? It starts with what's happening between my ears. There was a young lady at the church who really struggled with an eating disorder. She was thin, but in her mind, she thought she wasn't thin enough. And so she would binge and purge and binge and purge. But eventually God began to change her thought life. She began to see that she was a masterpiece created by God, that she was fearfully and wonderfully made and that she was eternally and unconditionally loved. And as she began to think that way, once she had victory in here, she started to see victory out here. And she writes about that moment of victory this way. 
She says, when the old thoughts come, came back last night, I simply rejected them for the truth. I was able to go to sleep without vomiting for the first night in a long time. The Bible says this, if the Holy Spirit is the boss over your mind, it leads to life and peace. Even something as small as a thought can end up being very big. Let's look at our thought life for a moment. The first thing I want you to think about is freeing your mind, freeing your mind. One of the great inventors in our history is Thomas Edison. When he was 67 years old, his factory burned down to the ground. The next day he walked over and saw all of the, the damage and destruction. And we know what he was thinking because he said this to his wife about what had happened. He said, there's great value in disaster. All our mistakes are burned up. He couldn't change the situation, but he did have the power to change the way he thought about it, the way he framed it. And that's what enables you to move from being a victim of your situation to becoming victorious. We see the same kind of thing in the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was once thrown into jail for doing the right thing. And while he's in there to make matters worse, there were church leaders who did not like Paul. And so they used this opportunity to kick him while he was down. And yet Paul, even though he was locked up on the outside, he was not locked up on the inside. And this is what he said. We know what he was thinking because he wrote this about his situation. He said, even though he's in jail, at least the gospel has been advancing. He says, everything that has been happened to me here has helped to spread the good news among the prison guards and the prisoners. And then he says, even though guys are preaching, they're my, I have critics and they've got the wrong motives. He says, here's the important thing, whether for right or for wrong reasons, Christ is being preached about. Do you see what Paul does? He didn't have the power to change his immediate situation, but he did have the power to change the way he thought about it and framed it. And that's how you move from being a victim to being victorious. We saw this kind of thing during the pandemic. The pandemic was so frustrating for many of us. I mean, I, I saw one lady, she was so frustrated about being sheltered in place at home. She hung this sign outside her window. It says, my husband is for sale. Hey, wait a second, is that my house? What's going on here? But being sheltered in place, you know, for almost three months, it was frustrating. And if every day you just focused on what you couldn't do, it was one depressing day after another. But there were those who stepped back from that moment. It was still frustrating, but they thought about what they could do. And I've read that, well, there was one lady who she took up calligraphy. There was one photographer. She started a YouTube channel for her pug. And then, well, there's one grandma who took up uh, animation for her grandkids. And then there was one guy who had a dream to paint. He had set aside that dream for 15 years, but he took this as an opportunity to relive his dream. See, this is how you turn an obstacle into an opportunity, a stumbling block into stepping stone. Even when I don't have the power to change my immediate situation, I can change the way I think about it. Two prisoners looking out the prison window. One sees the bars and one sees the stars. Allow God to help you frame the situation so you can move from being a victim to being victorious. Boy, something as small as a thought can end up being very big. So free your mind and then feed your mind, feed your mind. Over here, I have a table of food with some of my favorite snacks. And here's a Kit Kat and a chocolate chip cookie and a donut. Oh man, me and donuts, we go way back. I've never met a donut I didn't like. Over here, we've got, 
wheat toast and broccoli and carrots. And here's a question. If you are what you eat, the line behind me, he says, if you are what you eat, I guess that makes me a tourist. If you are what you eat, what have I been feeding my mind lately? Have I been feeding it junk food or have I been feeding it superfood? There's something called the law of exposure. And what the law of exposure says is that what you frequently and repeatedly expose your mind to, it has an influence on the way that you think. It's not inconsequential. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. What have I been feeding my mind repeatedly, frequently? Can I give you a pastoral nudge? I think it's important to stay informed and that's why it's good to watch a little bit of the news. But if all you're watching 24 hours a day is cable news, can I tell you exposing your mind to that all day is setting you up for anxiety and depression. Instead, make sure you're getting a diet of other kinds of food too. Read an inspiring biography. Listen to some uplifting music. Watch a movie with a positive message. We have a sign that hangs in our kitchen. I see it every day. It says, dance as if no one else is watching. Love as though you have never loved before. Sing as though no one can hear you and live as though heaven is right here on earth. Of course, the best superfood of all is the word of God. Joshua chapter one, verse eight says, don't for a minute let this book of the revelation be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed before you practice it. You got to meditate on it. What is meditation? Well, some of us have our PhD in worrying. And if you have your PhD in worrying, you're going to be very good at meditation because meditation is going over something again and again and again. And in this case, it's scripture. Here's an idea you can put into practice this week. Write down one of your favorite scriptures on a card. Maybe it's Romans chapter eight, verse 28. God works all things together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And then throughout the day, every time you feed your body, feed your mind. At breakfast, say, I know today God is going to cause all things to work together for my good. And at lunch break, well, declare, I know that God, even now in the middle of the day, is working all things together for my good. During your coffee break, declare, I know that I know that I know God is causing all things to work together for my good. And then at dinner time, make that same declaration. I know that God is working all things together for my good. Even while I'm sleeping, God is still working. When you begin to feed your mind the superfood of the word of God, well, something as small as a thought can end up being very big in your life. So, Free your mind, feed your mind, and then finally focus your mind. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Fix your mind. Here's a question. How do you keep bad thoughts from showing up in your head? The answer is you can't, they are gonna show up. But as the great spiritual reformer, Martin Luther used to say, you can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest 
in your hair. Think of it this way. It's like the way you use a remote control with your television. Say you turn your television on and, well, you've already seen this with your grandkids, so you change the channel. And, well, this is causing too much stress for you, so you change the channel again. And now you've got something that, well, we want to watch Pastor Joel, our friend, in the same way that when something is on that you don't want to watch, you change the channel. When a bad thought shows up, change the channel and replace it with a good thought. Nature abhors a vacuum. We can't just get rid of a bad thought and expect your mind to be empty. I heard about this little girl who told her mom, she said, mom, my stomach hurts. And her mom said, well, that's because it's empty. If you put something inside, then you'll feel better. The next week they were at church and the pastor said to the mom, I have a headache. And the little girl said, well, that's because your head's empty. If you put something in it, then you'll feel better. If you'll exchange the bad thought for a good thought, but sometimes in our lives, it seems like that remote is stuck. We try to change the channel, but that thought is so entrenched in our minds and our hearts, we have trouble moving from that channel. But even in those situations, the Bible says, God gives us power to break those strongholds. Our weapons have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places in our minds. We capture every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We take that bad thought, replace it with a God thought. And something as small as a thought can end up being very big in your life. Will you surrender your mind to God and allow him to change the way that you think. One of my favorite stories is about a, a man who went to visit his buddy and the buddy had captured an eagle and trained the eagle and put it with his chickens. And so when the guy came over to the house, he said, hey, that's an eagle. And his friend said, well, it, it is an eagle, but I've trained it to be a chicken. It thinks it's a chicken. And the man said, no, no, it's still an eagle. And he picked up the eagle and held it up and said, eagle, you are not made to walk on the ground. You're made to fly, stretch out your wings. And the eagle looked this way and that way, saw those chickens on the ground and he jumped down and joined the chickens. The friend said, I told you, I told you he's a chicken. No, no, give me another shot at it. So the next morning, the man takes the chicken or takes the eagle up to the top of the house. He holds the chicken up in the air. He says, you're made for the sky and not for the ground. Stretch out your wings and fly. But once again, the, the eagle looked this way and that way, jumped down and joined all the chickens. His friend said, I told you, I told you that's a chicken. And he said, no, no, he's an eagle. There's an eagle in there. Give me one more shot. So the next morning he goes up to the top of a mountain and at the top of the mountain, he holds the eagle up, points him straight at the sun and says, you're an eagle. You're not made to walk on the ground. You're made to fly in the sky. And the eagle let out a screech, stretched out his wings, flew off higher and higher. And the moral of the story is this, it really was an eagle, even though it thought it was a chicken. Friend, the devil may have told you that you were a chicken. The world may have told you, you were a chicken. You yourself may think that you are a chicken but there is an eagle on the inside of you that is waiting to get out. And if you will let God change the way that you think that you are loved by God, 
You are made by God, that God has a dream for your life, that God has not given up on you, that there's an eagle on the inside of you waiting to get out. You're not made to walk on the ground. Instead, you're made to fly. If you believe it in here, well, then it starts to have an impact out here. I believe I can fly. Are you ready to fly like an eagle? I wanna pray with you. The starting point for all of this is bringing your heart to Jesus Christ and your mind to Jesus Christ and surrendering your life to him. So I invite you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my sins. I change my mind. I surrender my mind to you for your purpose and for your kingdom and for your glory. Thank you, God, for making me a part of your family. And then Jesus, for all of us today, I pray that you would begin to shift our thinking in line with your word so that we can soar to higher heights. In Jesus' name, for Jesus' glory, amen. If you prayed that prayer of salvation, well, I encourage you to do three things. One is to begin to pray. Pray the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Pray it every day. And then read your Bible. Start in the New Testament with the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They will give you the words of Jesus. And then finally, as churches are starting to regather, find a good local church near you. It's so important to get connected to a local church. I wanna thank you again for allowing us to come into your home. I want you to know that you are loved and that we're praying for you. And I also would love to hear from you either on social media or through email. Please feel free to contact us at the Cathedral of Faith. Now for today's benediction, while we're doing something a little different, it is Father's Day and I wanna say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And our cathedral kids have put together something very special. We have something at the Cathedral of Faith called the Affirmation of Faith. This is a declaration we make that declares the words of God over our lives. If it gets in here, it will have an impact out here here are the Cathedral Kids. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be chosen. I will be in the gladness. The greatest our God. Great. Great. The greatest our God. And greatly is he to be praised. I am his child. I am his child. I am an heir with God and a joy heir with Jesus Christ. Therefore, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. The weapons of my warfare, they are not kindness. They are not kind, but they are mighty. Mighty. Mighty! Through God, to the pulling down of enemy strongholds. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I'm a twist. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. And greater is he. And greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Amen and amen. 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 Yo, Cathedral of Faith, what's up, family? Come on inside. It's the wrap, and we're going to just talk about what the amazing word that we just heard from Pastor Ken. Yeah. So come on in. We're going to talk. This is uh, Ramel, Aurora, Olivia, Vaughn, and Irene, and we're just going to talk about the message, and we're going to just kind of get into 
what was spoken over us. So, Ms. Aurora, what do you well, think? Well, Pastor can share the, the verse that say, do not be conformed with the standard of the, by the standard yeah. of this world, meaning do not copy the behavior of this world, yeah, yeah. do not talk like the world, do not act like the world, mm -hmm. but instead be, be uh, ask God to tr transform us inside yeah. by the renewing of our mind. What does that mean? We desire to have spiritually minded, meaning we have to ask the Holy Spirit to come and heal our mind because yeah, our good. eyes, our e ears, what we see and what we hear sometimes doesn't bring positive things. We actually sin because we act to what we entertain in this mind. So we need our mind to be healed so we can be Christ's mind, yeah. mind of Christ and be spiritually minded. Uh, that's what I get yeah. on that. You know, this is such a great topic about our mind. Yeah, really Absolutely. I was thinking right in the beginning, he also said sometimes the hardest step is zero to one, not zero to yeah. ten. And I think physically, even like just getting, getting up to off work the out, couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first step. And then after that, That's you're good. Me. But I also think when you're consumed or something seems so overwhelming or it just feels like I don't know how to get back to normal. Um, I think that it's that first step. God, what is it that I can focus my mind and what is that one step I can do? So I'm encouraged like one step can make the biggest difference. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Inertia, just getting it moving. That's right. Get moving. That's so, right. Ms. Olivia, so great to have you here with us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We'd love to hear what, what stuck out to you. Um, well, adding on to what Pastor Irene said yeah. is it's really true. It's like focusing your mind. You need to decipher your emotions from the facts of what you're experiencing because sometimes emotions can overcome you and you don't really see reality like it really is and you spiral. So bringing yourself back to what's really going on and how you can just do one thing to just recenter your mind and where your focus is, is really important. Wow. That is great. Yeah. That is great. Wow. So, so talk about how that's hit your life. Like, uh, this sounds like it's not just a, a, a something you got from a fortune cookie. It sounds like you've lived <laughs> some of this. Yeah. Okay. So, so take, take us babe, you know, into maybe a circumstance or a season of your life mm -hmm. of where you had to kind of activate those kind of principles to help you move forward. Mm -hmm. Well, being in college, it's really challenging. Being in a new place, doing everything on your own, um, not having your normal supporters, my parents right. and everything around me. It's really, you have to hold true to what your values are as you go about your new life. And you need to just like keep your mind focused on what's important to you. And so when you are overwhelmed and yeah. you know, you're not, sure about who you're going to be living with, what classes you're right. taking, what professors and everything. If you just come back and remind yourself that, no, God already has this figured out mm. and that I need to just do what I can to be obedient to him and keep my faith mm. to truly just keep believing um, what he has planned for me and living it out. There's a lot of, lot of wisdom That's in so those words. Good. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Our son is going away to college too, yeah. right? So hearing you talk like this, because I keep reminding my son, like, you know, the instantly he grabs the phone, right, in the morning. Even adult, we do that too. And I just keep reminding him, it's like, Jeremiah, make sure you feed your mind first. Mm -hmm. Put something good in your mind before you start getting busy in your life. Because, and I was saying that, like, you're going to go away in college and I'm not going to be there to nag you. You know, yeah. so, that's right. You know, Aurora, and speaking of our son, we also um, have two daughters. And, um, you know, as a father, oh, Olivia would, would love to hear, you know, it's Father's Day and would love to hear, you know, how, 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 how can we as fathers help, you know, our daughters just keep growing in this way um, of just of, you know, shaping and forming our perspectives? Um, well, I know with my experience, a lot of where my wisdom and learning has come from is through my dad. I'm really hey. thankful hey. I've had that experience shout out. Um, shout out. Shout out to fun. pastor Kurt That's right. um, <laughs> and he um, has helped me so much break things down like I was mentioning earlier with when I do come face to face with a moment of anxiety or of sadness or frustration just recentering my mind on the, God has a plan for me he's designed me a specific way to fill out and complete that plan even if it's Amen. not what I would have expected it to. Yeah. And also just judgment with, my dad has never judged me. Wow. He's always supported okay. me right where I'm at, right. even if I disappointed in myself or I'm not really sure, you know, where my life is going. My dad has always just been there to support me mm -hmm. in 
many ways. Um, I think it's really specific too to just like the type of person you are, knowing like how he can meet my needs as a father. So I've definitely been very appreciative of that. That's awesome. That's awesome. The power. Of well, it's it's evident to see the fruit yeah. of. Yes. I mean, you've come you come from great stock. I mean, like yes, you have. That's true. Um, just the whole family environment you grew up in here at the church and. And uh, and it's evident to see how you're deciphering all this all this information because like when you think back, I mean think back when we were in college, man. Like it's a very different world, man. I'm I'm seeing clips no of what's going on in college campuses days with the exchange of ideas and and even in these current events, man. And it's just I'm like I would go crazy in this environment, <laughs> like and so like and I I think you, that's why you see it on the rise, like in, in young yeah. people, you're seeing anxiety, you're seeing stress, you're seeing mental disorders, yeah. you're seeing depression, yeah. and um and I think it's it's so helpful to have these these principles that are that these are this is ancient wisdom, like and you look back through the years, of course the scriptures and even in other philosophies and and mindsets that these these small principles, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect, the small steps mm -hmm. and, and how like we can get away from those things in the modern day and age because we think we've progressed past that. Right. Right. But this stuff doesn't stop being true, right? right? Even in, even in physical, the physical That's world, right? right? The baby I, steps of working through Absolutely. It's, it, it's, it speaks to this idea of, of feeding, um, feeding our minds. So we free our minds and we feed our minds. Yeah. And this simple step of um, focusing on what you're eating, good food versus bad food. What are you feeding yourself? What, kind, what, st what steady diet are you feeding yeah. yourself? Um, and if I could just offer, you know, this in in addition to that, you know, it's one thing to uh, f focus on good foods and eat good foods, feed your mind, um, and that's a good thing. But if we really focus on not eating bad foods, then if you are what you eat, you're also what you don't eat. There's a synergy that happens yeah. there. And fundamentally, um, and this, this whole idea of what we're inundated with campus, we need to make sure we just add more good food that's right. each and every time. Yeah so that we get enough of it. Yeah. So it's not just one thing and when we can add another thing that over time it grows this butter effect, one simple yeah. butterfly effect, this yeah. one simple change can have this ripple effect. Both and make, literal and figurative, yeah. right? You had Good a thought food. about that. Huh? About yeah, I was just thinking like that's, that's very true and even if you're not in a faith environment being on a college campus. I know I used to go to Bible school. So being in that bubble of like everyone being Christian is great, but being around people that don't have faith, you can learn just right. as much from my right. experiences because you can learn how to understand people better, communicate with people better and learn to not judge people, but be able to use your experiences with these people to grow your own faith and how you can better share God's love with them. Yeah, Absolutely. Love, Absolutely. God's love. That's Focusing so strong, Miss Olivia. God's love. Yeah. Well, our scripture for today is Proverbs 4.23, which says, above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. That is so deep and so impactful. So our prayer for you today is that... Um, that you by this word would be able to guard what's in your mind and your heart and your spirit and that everything would follow after that. So. Absolutely. And we're going to continue these conversations. Uh, follow us over to the after wrap. We're going to continue these conversations, have some fun. We're going to interact and hopefully that you're just catching the spirit and the vibe of this is that we're just, we don't just listen to the message. We don't just hear the information. We're, mm -hmm. we're talking about how it shows up in our life. So please do this in your homes. Do this on the phone. Do this yeah. with your, do this in the chat rooms. Do it at, with us at the after wrap. But this is, we want to have fun together, but we want to grow together. Yeah. We want to give us, give food, feed each other, oh, right? And we're going to have fun that's too. So like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw Miss Olivia in the hot seat. I'm going to throw you curveball right okay. now. <laughs> so hot seat. What's your favorite food? Ooh, probably popcorn or steak. Oh, really random. Nice. But those Good are call. my two main. Protein. We can, okay. We yeah. can make popcorn steak. Miss Olivia, favorite, yeah. favorite, uh, favorite song right now. Oh. Doesn't well, matter. Don't worry. I You're... love Taylor Swift. I mean, that's another thing me and my dad share. I know I just, <laughs> I know I just that's out awesome. of him here. That's out the but closet I love right Taylor there. Swift and Harry Styles. That's my awesome. Two people. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Miss Olivia, like for yes, just kind of thank you. speaking your perspective, but also just representing a generation, representing a mindset that is so relevant and so important to the world. And um, thank you for letting us learn from you and your yes. perspective so this weekend. It's 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 really enriching, and I I am I'm actually blown away because I think 
you've got more figured out than you think you do, probably. Oh, well, yeah. thank you. And you're well on your way to changing the world. So yeah. God bless you. Thank and Cathedral you. of Faith, God bless you all. Mm -hmm. May the Lord be with you. Yeah. And as always, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap.